Okay, this is bonus module one, and it has to do with credit card. How to use your credit cards intelligently, hear what I'm saying, in order to help you buy real estate. So this is that module, that's my introduction to it, and I'm going to talk to you about fees, rate, how to increase your limits, and so on. Now, you have to be a smart investor here. You have to decide how you want to use your credit cards. There are points in life where you'll say, listen, I'm buying a house on a credit card. It might be a $20,000 repossession because banks won't lend on it. If you have $20,000 available in your credit card, guess what? It's fairly easy to buy. Do we agree? If we have another credit card at $20,000 that has uh, nothing on it, we could do all our repairs and flip the house and make $20,000, $30,000, $40,000, or $50,000. So this section is how to use your credit cards in order to buy real estate. That's what this section is about. It's a bonus that I'm giving you guys. So I'm going up right next to this module, module bonus number one of, it is actually module number eight. Well, welcome back everybody into our bonus number one, using credit cards to fund your real estate. And this section is a bit of fun, but at the same time, I think I have proven to you that having access to credit on credit card is a key to your financing in real estate. Uh, you know, I'm not a, a uh, propagandizing the, the fact that you should have 10, 15, 20 credit cards in your wallet and say, I'm going to buy all my real estate with this. I'm saying that credit card usage, when properly used, is a good source of available funds for your real estate, to fund your real estate. Now, you know, in a sense, it's quite simple. I, I bought some properties a little while ago in Detroit, uh, Michigan, and you know, you buy a house for twelve thousand dollars. Well, twelve, and I could have bought probably for five thousand. Well, guess what? First of all, how difficult is it for a Canadian to go to a U.S. bank and say, "I'd like to get a mortgage"? Very difficult. I'd like to get a mortgage on a foreclosed property that's been vacant for six months and not necessarily the best area of town. And you know, I'm a Canadian and I'm going to do all those repairs, I'm going to sell it to make a profit. Could you see that? A lot of banks would say, hey, hey, we don't know you, we don't care about you, and we really don't even want to land in that area of the city, therefore we're turning you down. Now, $12,000 on a credit card, for some of you guys, might be a lot of credit available. And for some of us, it may not be. And I'm not trying to brag here, I'm trying to get you guys to the point where you will have available credit to close on some deals if you need to, and people say, well, Mark, you can't pay, uh, you can't buy a house on a credit card. Uh, no, you know, you have to start thinking outside the box and listening, listening to common sense here. Uh, yes, you could go to the bank and just say, listen, I'd like to get a cash advance. And a cash advance, unfortunately, if you check your uh, credit card company, cash advance sometimes are treated at a very, very high interest rate. Not the same as a balance transfer, not the same as those checks that they send you once in a while. So, you know, you, you want to know your business. Now, let's change this from real estate to, let's say that you were an owner of a trucking company and you had five or six trucks on the road, okay? So you have trucks on the road and your drivers go and they leave and uh, uh, they leave for two, three, four, five weeks sometimes and they haul some stuff all across uh, United States and Canada. And uh, as thing happens in, in anything, they have something that breaks, so uh, engine blows up, or effectively they go on a bad road, they blow up four, five, six tires, and first thing you know, these tires are two or three thousand dollars a pop. Well, you know, as a business owner, uh, how am I going to resolve the problem that, that my trucker has three thousand miles away, uh, and he needs twenty-five thousand dollars worth of tires? Well, most of the time, you'll go to your bank and you'll borrow. But if you're self-employed, you're running a business, you've got millions of dollars in real estate, you've got millions of dollars in trucks and so on, and you go to your bank, what will they ask you just to give you a $20,000 loan? Think about it. You're self-employed. You own 15 properties or six pro or three properties, and you work from home. You have no T4. Your tax returns, you do them when time comes, and you stretch it to the maximum because you've got advantages tax-wise. And naturally, as a self-employed person, well, you know, you're going to make sure that you pay yourself the least amount of money in salary, so your, you know, your personal tax return is going to be the lowest. And then you go to the bank and you go for a loan, and you want $25,000 for six tires, or you want $25,000 to do a roof, or buy appliances, or 
even you, you found a great deal. You know, we were talking about that shopping center there. That was 100% finance, and it's you know it's 1.7 million dollars. That's what it's worth. You paid 1.3, 100% finance. But you show up at the closing table, and they say, well, Mr. Mousseau, Mr. Smith, Mr. Thompson, uh, your legal fees, your land transfer tax, your uh, appraisal, your commitment fee, your mor mortgage broker fees, all these fees, they come up to $35,000. Did you bring a check? Well, let me tell you something. At times, uh, you're going to scramble for that. So what I want to do in this section is explain to you how to you you understand, I hope now, how to use your credit card. But I want to explain to you how to build credit, what to spend it on and what not to, and what could you do with that that will help you. So this is this section here, okay? So let's go, um, let's go forward on this. Uh, first of all, I have a personal life statement is any day above ground is a great day. You know, guys, I'm happy to train you. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun to speak. To, well, I have, I'm speaking to you, but I'd like to get your feedback on, on uh, what I'm teaching you. But any day above ground is a great day. That's my personal statement here. So, okay. With credit, you multiply your chances of being able to buy. You multiply your investment possibility if you use establish and maintain good credit. Then we're going to talk about maintaining good credit, how to do it, uh, uh, how to spend on these credit cards, what to pay, what's the maximum and everything. So, so you want to maintain and, and establish good credit. And believe me, in today's economy, uh, it is very, very difficult uh, for a lot of people in North America right now. Times are tough for everyone. So, you know, there's some little guidelines that you want to try to make sure that you you follow and you want to try to make sure. I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody. It's going to be perfect. But that's the intent here. So, you know, uh, here's a quick question for you guys. What is the cost of borrowing $30,000 for one year at 8%? So, you know, let's say that you do need uh, a roof to be replaced and you've got one credit card and uh, it's an 8% uh, credit card. Uh, and you guys are saying, well, Mark, my credit card's at 19, 24, uh, 16, 18. I'm going to talk to you about that later. But let's say that you had a credit card, 30,000, one year, 8%. Your cost of borrowing would have been there $2,400 a year, interest only here. I'm not talking principal interest, but interest only. Do we agree? It would have been $200 a month. So when, when, when you look at a credit card, you say, okay, this is costing me, this is costing me, well, naturally the fun of... Uh, phones, home phones, let's see, let's go off for this one, home phones when you work at home, so it's costing me uh, $2,400, $200 a month to borrow that money. Now, if you had to go to your bank and get a personal loan, just personal, we're, we're talking unsecured here, a credit card is unsecured, so if I had to go to the bank and get an unsecured loan, what kind of interest rate would you have gotten that at? You would have got that at probably six, seven, or eight. Just plain, I'm walking in eight, nine percent. So, depending on the kind of credit card that you have, you may be uh, at about the same rates. Now, people are saying, "Are you kidding me? That you could get some credit cards at eight percent and so on?" Guys, very, very easy. Do a Google search on lowest credit cards offers, and you'll see on the you'll see offers from. Uh, uh, MBNA, Capital One, 6.9, 7.9, 8.9, and in Canada we have one at 4.2 percent. I mean, that's that's that just it blows my mind. No security, no nothing, 4.2 percent interest rate. So I mean, and, and better than this, when you think about it, it's better than this. If you're borrowing the thirty thousand dollars at eight percent to do the real estate, the interest is deductible from your income. So actually, you're almost at four percent. So, when I look at it and say, as a businessman now, I'm talking business description, I'm uh, business side, I'm saying I have this piece of plastic that is costing me, let's say, 12%, which is tax deductible. My net is 6%. I have not given any security, any guarantees, nothing. I don't even have to renew it most of the time. If I use it properly, we'll talk about that. But a credit card I'll have as long as I basically want. I'll have this credit card and it's available to me at that rate. No questions. I don't have to go to my bank manager, bend over forward, give him my house as a guarantee, give him my RSPs, transfer some stuff. I don't need to give him anything. 
So why wouldn't we use our credit cards for that? Now, I get blasted because having too many credit cards, having too much credit on too much credit card affects your credit. I absolutely agree with that. I'm going to talk about it. And also, at a certain point, you start saying, hey, you know, I'm running a business here and no banks are lending to self-employed people. So this is the only financing that I have. And unfortunately, I have to play with that. And it, or, Because if you don't, if you're not willing to take on that, that burden, that high interest rate, that lowering your credit, then you may not get anywhere in um, buying into real estate. So that's a thought for you guys. So what's a credit score? Well, first of all, your credit score is a, snatch, is a, sna is a snapshot of your credit history. What have you been doing over the last six months, year, two years, three years, five years? So your score is a representation of that. It is generated by a compilation of reports from two major reporting agencies. And normally it is Equifax and TransUnion. These are the top two. There's also in the States, Aquarian and so on. But Equifax and TransUnion are the two big uh, credit companies. And by the way, they are not public companies. They are private companies. They're sort of a franchise company. And who do they work for? Well, they work for the the lenders, not for you. You are not their client. You could call TransUnion or Equifax and say, I'm not happy about this. Take my credit bureau off. Guess what? They don't care about you. Whatever is written there, you almost have to prove that it's not true. It's a pain in the heck. It's, it's, they don't work for you. And they charge you a fee, depending on what you do, to get your credit bureau. Okay? So, um, understanding the numbers, well, it's quite simple. Uh, credit score will range, Canada or U.S., between about 400 and 900. And basically, it is based on, this score is based on payment history, the amount that's owned, the length of credit, the length of time that you have this credit, how much new credit, and the type of credit that you have. So, quickly, let's talk about this. Uh, payment history. Now, some people say, you know, uh, oh, I just received my bill. It's, it's $12 this month. I'll skip it. I'll pay it next month. Well, what that does is that it puts a little check mark on your credit that says, hey, by the way, you're late once. You're R1. You're R2. So your revolving credit, R is for revolving, says that, hey, you forgot to make a payment one month. My recommendation to all of you guys is be on all pre-authorized payment on all all of your credit card for the minimum payment. And that's going to repair your credit within 6 to 12 months. That's going to bring you some points back up. Okay? So make sure you pay your minimum. The idea of paying 5000 to one card, nothing to the other, does not help you at all. You're better paying 1000 on five cards and one card 5000 The amount owed. Naturally, when you rack up your cards, so if you're always at 100% of its usage, it has an effect on your credit. Well, you're right. You know, when I say go out and buy a house on a credit card, and you had a fifty thousand or credit card, you use fifty thousand. Guess what? It will have an effect. But at the same time, could you have bought the property without having access to that fifty thousand dollars? How long have you had that credit for? So, is it a new card, an old card? Uh, and naturally, the type of credit. So, uh, here's a here's something new. Uh, if you guys use, uh, I don't know, uh, J C Penney. Petro Canada or MasterCard. As a lender, when a lender looks at that, and okay, let's add some more here: uh, Tip Top, uh, Zellers, uh, The Bay, uh, Victoria, whatever. I mean, think about it. As a lender, if I see that my client that comes in my my office has 15 credit cards, and I'm going to be sorry, I'm going to say. Sorry about that, but, you know, those Mickey Mouse cards, and I call them Mickey Mouse cards, you don't need a Tip Top, you don't need a Zellers, you don't need a uh, SO card, you don't need a BP card, you don't need a, a uh, Future Shop. What is it that you need? You need, you need three or four good, strong credit cards. Because with a MasterCard, MBNA, you could pay your gasoline, you could pay your grocery, you could pay your tools at Home Depot, at Lowe's. So... Get rid of those Mickey Mouse cards and build on the bigger cards. And it's going to allow you to control at the same time the number of cards that you have and the payment history. Because the more you're going to spend on one card and pay them at the end of the month, the better your credit rating is going to be. So if you have a... Uh, 
a tip top or a future shop or radio shack or now it's called uh, the source a card like that where you have three hundred dollars worth of credit does not have the same value as a three thousand mbna do we agree and it's the kind of card that you almost forget to pay because there's so much a little balance so i'd say get rid of the mickey mouse cards and build on the big ones uh, what is your credit score? Well, very simple. Uh, a, B, C, and D. So, um, oops, sorry, I'll go back here. Oh, back, 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 back. So, how do I do this previous? Um, so, A credit, 670 to 900. And, you know, it varies from Canada, U.S., 620, 669, 580, and so on. Uh, your mortgage broker will actually tell you your score. Uh, a credit is very, very good. You could get about anything. And, by the way, somebody with a credit of 680 to 700, would normally qualify fairly easy for commercial lending. So try to get your credit in the 680 and above. Uh, that will be definitely beneficial for you guys. Now, your homework, guys, it's, it's funny. It's the first time so far that I'm asking you to do something. Pull your credit bureau. You go to Equifax.com, TransUnion.com, pull your credit bureau and have a look at it, okay? And uh, all these credit bureaus explain what it is, uh, what's it all about. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip here. Uh, in Canada and in the state, there's what's called a consumer proposal, which is just before a bankruptcy. And if you read your um, Banking Act, uh, basically, when you do a con uh, consumer proposal, there's a little black spot on your credit bureau but it's not a bankruptcy. And a bankruptcy will stay on your credit bureau, depending on the states and in Canada, for six or seven years. Well, a, a consumer proposal stays for three years. Uh, the, the difference is very simple. The consumer proposal is, uh, I, Mark Mousseau, go to my trustee and say, listen, I want to propose before these creditors bankrupt me, I want to propose a settlement. And if your settlement is approved, it's considered an approved creditor's proposal and they did not have anything to do so it's going to tarnish your credit for three years but you you know when you apply for a loan so that they always ask you have you ever declared bankruptcy well you have not therefore it helps you uh, in your future score so just make sure that you have that also on a credit bureau there's a place where it says a consumers uh, statement and you know if something happened you've been laid off you got divorced you're, you're in a lawsuit you've got in a car accident something happened that prevented you from making payments for a period of time uh, send a letter to credit bureau and they have to actually put it on your credit bureau so it, it doesn't change your score but at least for a lender it will explain what happened now what affects your credit well too many inquiries uh, you know it's it's nice but uh, too many people uh, take credit cards everywhere and, and that really gets me upset you, you're in the airport and the people in the airport are offering you a Primus which is a long distance carrier and they said sir we're going to save you one penny a minute on your long distance but what they don't tell you is that they're pulling a credit bureau on you you walk into a merchant store and they offer you one of their credit cards and you say yes you say yes and every time somebody sends you a credit card you take it well every time somebody pulls a credit bureau on you you lose points Every time you forget to make a payment, you lose points. If your limit is always maximum use, you lose points. Accepting card everywhere, that's what I just mentioned. Having open accounts. What you should do is when you're going to look at your credit bureau, the credit cards that you've torn away, you've cut them off uh, two years ago, whatever, call these companies and have them close and make sure that they state that it is closed at customer's request. So what that will do is that it will help you establish or at least show that you're taking care of your account never have a bank close an account have them close it you close your own account and actually judgment bankruptcies and lease liens will have an effect on your credit bureau um, which uh, how many should you have well I just talked about this one uh, you should have uh, three or four good strong credit cards which one Visa American Express uh, well Visa American Express MasterCard um, you know these kind of cards guys you're allowed one more uh, Victoria Secret probably you know it's good for the family and all that um, what if you have too many um, close them get rid of but you know you never close a credit card until you've obtained more credit than the other one how to increase your limit? Very, very simple. Spend on it and pay it at the end of the month. Uh, so um, spend on it, pay it at the end of the month. Spend on it, 
pay at the end of the month, and every six months you're entitled to actually call your credit card company and ask for them to increase it. And most of the time they'll ask you a few questions, uh, uh, you know, why do you need an increase, and, and never tell them that you're buying a vacation. So, you know, I'm in real estate, I need to buy some appliances for my buildings, I got some repairs to do, uh, I'm, I need a few thousand dollars as a down payment, and by the way, do you have any of those checks for low interest rate checks? Could you please send me that? Um, I have another note here. You should have your own credit cards. Uh, and I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, partners, life partner, husband and wife. Guys, the worst thing that you could have is have what's called a spousal card. Ladies, guys, each of you get your own card under your own name. The reason I say this, I know it's more expensive. I know it's all that. But if something goes wrong in your life, if, if one of you loses his job, and let's say the husband loses his job, he loses his credit, he goes bankrupt, and you've always used his credit cards. What you've done for those years is that you've built up your partner's credit, and now you have none. So never, it's against, no, it's against, it doesn't make sense for you to lose your credit because you're using his card. Now, another thing also, guys, you don't need to have five gold cards in your wallet and three platinum. Because gold card, platinum, the black cards, all those kind of things, most of the time they have nice packages like travel insurance, uh, car insurance, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. You only need one of those. The rest of the cards should all be low interest cards with no points, no nothing. You don't need Zeller's points. You don't need... Uh, <laughs> It, it, it's almost as ridiculous as uh, in Canada we have CIBC Aerial Plan or you have Delta in the States. Well, every dollar that I spend, I get a point. But that interest, that card is at 18.9. But CIBC also has a card at 6.9 that has no points. Well, really, do I really need the points or I need to save the money on my interest, which means that I will be able to buy the ticket when I want and go where I want instead of being on a waiting list. Okay? Um, if you're planning on using your credit card for balance transfer, plan that ahead. So if you know that you're going to be closing in two or three months, obtain your checks in advance, check the dates, make sure that the, you receive them on time, and use your credit card to acquire appreciating assets, guys, and knowledge. Appreciating assets and knowledge, buy something, you know, buy something that will make you money. That's what I have here. So I think uh, this is, I'm not sure if this is not the last slide of this section, but I hope you understand the importance of credit and what you could do with it. That's it for this. Oh, how to increase your limit. I think I just talked about this. There we go. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. Here's, here's how you go with um, your bank. Whoops, I think I'm there. Don't change slide. Okay. When you want um, uh, when you want to get a, uh, an increase in limit, here's what you do. You call your bank and say, listen, my name is Mark Musso. I'm calling about my credit card. I'd like to know what my current interest rate is. Start with the interest rate. So, Mr. Musso, your interest rate is 12%. Hmm, that's quite expensive. Would you have another card, or could you give me a rate decrease? You know, 18% uh, is too much. What would be your lowest card that you could offer me? Well, I could uh, probably offer you a green card, ugly green card, and uh, that one is at 6.9. Good. Do I have any annual fees? Well, sir, your old card, you did not have any, but this one you do. So a lot of students come to me sometimes and say, well, Mark, I was offered a 6.9 credit card, but the annual fees are 29. My other one was free. Well, if you put 20,000 on a credit card and you're at, let's say, 15%, that's $3,000 a year in interest. Do we agree? If you take the same 30,000 and you're at 6%, that's uh, $1,800 or six, yeah, something like that. Anyway, do you see where you'd save? So just get your interest rate down. Even if you have annual fees, based on the lower card, it's okay. And ask them if they could waive your fees. Now, the fun question, what is my current limit? 15000 What's my balance? 10000 Well, I need an immediate increase in my credit line. So I need, I need you to increase this. And what they'll say is, how much do you need? Your question is, how much could you give me? How much you need? How much can you give me? How much you need? How much can you give me? And at the end, you say, well, you know what? I really need 100000 And then they're going to say, sir, we can't give you 100000 Then, Then what you say is, then how much could you give me? Because the first one that will speak there will lose. So now, play with this, guys. Use your credit wisely. It is to buy real estate, not to buy trips. And that's basically it uh, for that.
Um, let's see. Gee, my phone is ringing. That means it's probably time to go. Okay, guys. So uh, for this section, I want to thank you.